Ah, yes, another Ender 3. This is the latest low-cost Ender 3, the Ender 3 V3 SE. That's a mouthful. At $199, it's actually quite a bit different than the previous Ender 3s, and they claim it prints a little faster. So let's check it out on today's Film It Friday. Film It Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. The Ender 3 V3 SE comes as a kit, but it's really easy to put together. There's three screws that hold one side of the rail, and then there's three screws that hold the other side. You put these in from the bottom. And then there's actually two screws at the back that go in from the top. And then the assembly is pretty much done. Then you need to just connect the LCD, and then there's three screws that hold that LCD to the side of the base. From there, you have to connect the main cable to the hot end assembly. And then there's a bracket that goes on top of that to hold the wires in place. Two screws tighten that up. Then there's a connector for the X stepper motor. And there's also a connector for the Z stepper motor. And there's only one Z stepper motor, but there's two threaded rods connected by a belt, which is really nice. There's a bracket behind the X stepper motor for the cable to snap into. The spool holder assembly goes into the top of the unit and there's no more T-nuts. There's nuts built into the top of the unit so you just insert the two screws and tighten them up. And the spool holder to the bracket is already done for you. You don't have to do that either. So this is much easier. Make sure the voltage switch at the base of the unit is set to the right voltage, 115 for the US. Just plug in the power cord and this thing is ready to go. This is the easiest Ender 3 I've ever put together. The bed has dual guide rods instead of a single rail like the normal Ender 3, but I did notice it's slightly skewed when I compared it to the back of the unit. The bed is a polycarbonate surface so prints stick to it really well, almost too well. It's 220 by 220 millimeter size and it's mounted to a magnetic base so you can pop it off and flex it to get the prints off. It comes with a direct drive Sprite extruder and it's got a larger heat block so therefore the nozzles are actually a little bit longer for higher temperature or faster printing. But it still has PTFE tubing going all the way down to the nozzle so it's limited to 260 degrees C so you still have the issue that PTFE tubing could burn from the heat of the nozzle. The cooling fan duct is actually 3D printed so this must be an early unit that I got. Creality did send me this machine for free so I could try it out. The auto level on this thing is the best I've seen from Creality. It goes through a three-step process initially. It heats the nozzle, then it tries to clean the nozzle, which isn't perfect. And then it does a Z offset maneuver, where it centers, goes to the side, taps a few times. It works really well. And then it goes through a 16-point auto level and records each reading and displays it on the LCD. And you can edit it, you can confirm it, and go forward. And then it'll give you the Z offset, which you can actually change. But that is all done automatically during that leveling system. So I decided to run my squares test, and it came out perfect. I couldn't ask for a better bed level on an under 3. This machine came with only one pre-sliced sample file. It's the CR10 cat, the cat that was on the original CR10, the first Creality machine I ever had. It looks good, but it took two hours to print this. It's not a demonstration of how fast this thing can print. So I decided to go into Cura and use my version 5.4 extra fast 0.28 profile. Normally it takes 47 minutes to print a Benchy. I bumped the temperature, I bumped the speed up to the 250 they said it could handle. The wall speeds, I bumped those up. Surface speed, bumped that up. And then I actually upped the acceleration as well. I went to 2500, which they said was the max, and 1500 on the outer wall and things like that. This should kill this print. On a normal Ender 3, this would not, this would shift all over the place. It would come out terrible. So this is going to be a real test of not only can it handle these accelerations, but can it print fast. I also reduced the minimum layer time down to one second. And then I sliced it and it said I got down to 35 minutes. Here it is printing. It's a time lapse, but it really didn't seem like it was printing that fast. But I thought it would be shifting and really look bad. I mean, this isn't a great print, but for 35 minutes, it's not bad on a $200 machine. But the fact is, when I looked at the time, it actually took 46 minutes. So 46 minutes for this. This is not a fast printer. 
Now, it printed it halfway decent, better than I thought it would at those accelerations. A regular Ender 3 would not handle that. So there is an improvement on how it handles speed. It's just not a fast printer. But at $199, I think it's got some really nice features for a first-time user. I mean, under $200, you get a direct drive, and you get that auto level with auto Z offset setting. That worked perfectly. I got a perfect bed level. I didn't have to do anything. There's no knobs to adjust anymore that can throw it off. And the dual rods here to support the bed makes it nice and level. And the dual threaded rods connected to a belt makes this say stay parallel to the bed. So those are things I think they really did right to help a beginner get started with 3D printing. Plus the fact that it's easy to assemble. So I think for $199 for a beginner printer, this is good. Just don't buy it because you think you're gonna get something that prints fast. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you wanna help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just buy a membership through fangs.com. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.